the teacher centered learning changed to student centered learning i called it the first education revolution it's time for the second education revolution when teachers become a silent partners in the teaching process and students bring out the best in their teachers it was on an afternoon in december i was sitting in my office and a student was brought with his mother for an admission interview i asked the student that your profile says that in the last one year you have done nothing you were out of the school what were you doing the student answered there was a conflict in my family and i needed to look after my mother my father had left home my mother was an emotional wreck and i was there doing that i did not believe the student who takes a layoff who takes a break from education for family issues i asked the student what was your routine during that time during last one year the student said i would get up in the morning i would make food for my mother i would clean the house i would sit down with my mother take her to a doctor or talk to her to get her out of the stress that she was into sometimes when i had time and i was up to it i would talk to my friends in the school and find out what i was missing and i was missing a whole lot but then at that moment my mother and her problems were more important i still did not believe the student then i looked at the mother who has been sitting silently all this while a bit embarrassed she was in tears and the tears were rolling down those tears they brought the credence to the story of that student and they brought shame to me for not believing in the story of that student such are the students in our classrooms we are fortunate that student came up in two months time became one of the best students in his class that brought credibility to his story such are the students in our classrooms and we are fortunate I was walking down the hallway one day of the school and I heard a girl talking to the teacher innocently she asked a question she pointed the middle finger at the teacher and she said teacher why is middle finger bad in some countries mostly in the west the teacher replied oh never show middle finger it's very bad right and don't talk about it it's not to be spoken about in the school and the student replied no teacher the middle finger is as good as any other finger the student showed the teacher that she was holding a book and the middle finger did the same job like any other any of the five fingers in the hand the student further said teacher when we run out of arguments when we run out of sensible arguments when we run out of good vocabulary we resort to middle finger we resort to curse words it is a mindset of the society we have to change it i and you must start ignoring it so that they lose their importance and we become a more sane society the teacher on that day was not the teacher the student on that day was the teacher such are the students in our classrooms and we are fortunate i was teaching letter writing in the high school of esl learners english as second language learners and i had pitched the class a little low considering that some of the students struggled with the language in the middle of the teaching one girl raised her hand and said teacher i have read in the internet there is something called appendix to a letter i smiled curiously and i said oh let's go on from here 
And I said, right, we will study appendix, we will study annexures to the letter, and that became the benchmark of my teaching. That class of 24 ESL learners went on to analyze 48 poems in the classroom. 48 poems from 48 different poets, 48 from poems, 48 poems from 48 different countries belonging to different genres. My students challenged the teaching in me. My students challenged the knowledge in me and I became a better teacher. They brought out the best in me as a teacher. That is what I want my students to bring out the best in us as teachers. This was one side of the spectrum. The second side of the spectrum is while working in Aboriginal schools in Canada, I realized that the choice with the administrators is to have a teacher who may not have been most suitable for the job or not to have a teacher at all. Because in adverse climatic conditions, in inhospitable areas, when no one likes to go, you have to find a person, a living entity, to stand in the classroom and they get anyone who is prepared to come to those areas and they become teachers. In most of the international schools across the world, in the post-pandemic era, it is difficult to find teachers, let alone suitable and let alone teachers who can match with the subject. So mostly you find a teacher with a biology background. Or let me say, an individual with a biology background is teaching math. An individual with a management background is teaching chemistry or vice versa. And then we expect these teachers in their business class to be bringing real life situations, problems of the current day industry. I want them to teach them the products that will be in vogue 15 years from now when those students have a career in business. I want them to teach them about the careers which do not exist now, which would be there in 15 years from now. And I expect these teachers with a background which do not match with the subjects. That is essential today and it makes it imperative that you students bring out the best I have visited some countries in Asia where people who cannot find a career in business, engineering, or as a civil servant get left out and they become teachers. 90% of the men become teachers because they have not been able to successful in any other career. 70% of the ladies become teachers because it is a job of convenience and it is a safe job. It is in that perspective, it is with this as a backdrop that the students have the responsibility of bringing out the best in their teachers. That is what we require to do. One of my most favorite questions in any teaching recruitment interview is that you studied a subject as a student. Now you are teaching that. How has things changed? How have you progressed? And the teacher says, the books are the same. The contents is the same. I am given, being given the curriculum. It's all on the hard drive. The lesson plans are given to me and I teach. It is not difficult. Somebody somewhere in the world is doing a new experiment related to their course, related to your course. And if you do not bring out that experiment in your classroom, then you fail in your responsibility. My, teach, my students, have the responsibility of bringing out the best in their teachers in this perspective. Every country is not as fortunate as Norway, Finland or Germany where teaching is the best job available. In most countries, you have to find an individual to become a teacher. In a class of 26, there are hardly two aspirants for teaching as a career. They may not be the best. In search perspective, the students have the responsibility of bringing out the best in their teacher. That is the second academic revolution that I would term. 
Lovers and poets have had a penchant for moon since times and memorial. But that first step towards exploration of moon became when some students took up the challenges. Some time ago, some expert in computers had said 32-bit operating system cannot be possible. Somebody said anything heavier than air will never fly. Somebody said alternating current is a waste of time. Nobody will ever use it. Somebody said nuclear energy will never work out. Atoms shatter on their own will. And all these things became a reality because there were students who took up the challenges. When I was a student in the 80s, nobody spoke to me ever about social media technology and computers. I might have seen the word computer in a dictionary. I'm not sure about it. But I am living today in an era of technology, in an era of social media, in an era of information explosion, which I had never anticipated. The products that I had seen as a student are no longer there, whether it is an electronic typewriter or an ink pen and many others. Today, I live in an era of social media where my body and soul feels naked. All information about me is on the social media. The internet websites know more about my personality than I know about myself. Privacy is an illusion and a myth. In such an era of social media, the profile of an average student is, he is deck savvy. He lives day and night in social media platform. That student works hard to find information from the internet, the same information that his teacher is trying to find out to bring it to the classroom. Such is the profile of today's student and that student has to bring out the best. In a jungle, giraffe is the tallest animal. Elephant is the largest animal. Cheetah is the fastest running animal. Owl or a fox is the wisest animal. But who's the king of the jungle? The lion. Not the tallest, not the fastest, not the wisest. The group of students in a class in that group, somebody is a giraffe, somebody is an elephant, somebody is a fox, and somebody is a cheetah. They all come together to bring out the best in the student, in the teachers. How does it happen? When I walk up to my class every morning, I'm not looking for anything else. I'm looking for those smiling faces. They rejuvenate me. They make my day. Those smiling faces can kill anyone. Keep up that smile in front of your teacher. The teacher will be forced to bring out the best in her team or his teacher. Have an emotional connect with the teacher. Emotional connect with the teacher, not to develop a relationship, but to develop a working relationship in that classroom so that when you think critically and when you ask challenging questions, your teacher does not feel intimidated. Your teacher feels connected to you. Your teacher feels that you are a student who's trying to bring out the best in that teacher for the best of the classroom. Because most of the students, when you ask them, what is your goal in life? Teacher, 6.5 in IELTS, 85% grades to go to my university of choice. No. You as students today, have to bring out the best in your teacher to get knowledge. Not just to gain knowledge in the class, but to be a partner in teaching as part of that knowledge in the class. Bring out the teacher in you and hold the mantle of being a good teacher. And do not get into a class. Do not limit your goals into that IR score or into that grades that you will get. Further broaden your goal. Your goal is to acquire knowledge. And not just to acquire knowledge, but to create knowledge in your classroom. 
then you will be able to bring out the best in your coaches. Think critically. Talk. Ask questions. Questions are never ending. Answers limit themselves. There is an end to an answer. There is never an end to the question. Create questions. Create questions which are not related to the curriculum. I was teaching Marxism as a critical perspective theory. And one of my students said, teacher, I want to view this poem in the perspective of feminism. I said, there is no feminism in the story, in the poem. He said, I will find it out. I said, go and get one. And sure enough, he brought one. He viewed the poem from the perspective of feminism. And we all realized we had never thought about it. He was the teacher of the class on that day. Get such questions to the classroom. Use the same internet, use your mind to develop it. There is never a wrong answer. There is never a stupid question. It, you know, it is your mindset which makes a question good or bad. It is your justification which makes a question good or bad. Continue with that. Don't. Another important thing is if you want to bring out the best in your teacher, understand your teacher. Understand the background of your teacher. Understand the limitations of your teacher. If a chemistry teacher is teaching business, there will be limitations. Stand with your teacher. Fill in those gaps which exist in your classroom and for those gaps become a teacher yourself. And you will be able to make your classroom the best teaching environment ever existed. You will be able to bring out the best in the teacher. Stand, hold the shoulders, stand with each other, with your teacher. Try and bring out the best in them. You will never find answers to all the questions. In education, there are never answers to all the questions. Education is evolutionary. It is dynamic in nature. It changes. It can only be limited to the thinking of a human mind. And a critically thinking human mind can never be limited. A student's mind can definitely never be limited. That is how the student brings out the best in his or their teachers. I have not given you answers to all the questions. Nobody can give you a solution to all the questions. Keep adapting. Keep growing, because you as students will find answers to more questions than your teachers will be. Do not limit it into classroom rules. Do not limit it into course outline. Do not limit into the curriculum document provided by an education ministry in some country. Do not limit it to anything. Only your mind limits it. That is how you bring out the best in your teachers. Keep doing it. You are the student who are the teachers of tomorrow. Before you step out into the bigger world, into a larger world of a career of being responsible students, of being a knowledge bank for the society. That's how you will be able to bring out the best in your teacher. Thank you very much.